It's the end of an era for the Chicago Defender with the historic organization printing its final newspaper this morning and shifting to a digital focus. I caught up with leaders in the black press to reflect on its legacy. Decade by decade, page by page, the Chicago Defender has been there at table sides, barber shops, and salons telling the story of the black experience. This is the Defender to so many of us. It's that paper that we hold in our hands. It's, it's the black icons that we could always find on the front page. If you can't find them anywhere else, you will see our folks on the front page. Founded by Robert S. Abbott in 1905, the legendary black newspaper was pivotal in the Great Migration, encouraging Southerners to come up north and make Midwest cities their new home. And we know that the Great Migration is one of the singular events of American history that really helped propel the civil rights movement and, 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 and give African Americans in this country a sense that, you know, they can do better. Through ink, angst, and bylines, reporters for the Defender documented every forward movement and setback of the civil rights movement. And we had a good group, a small group, but a very good group of people who were committed to black press. That spirit propelled the Defender to live up to its namesake for Chicago's black community, addressing the neighborhoods other media would not. The Defender then was one of the, I don't, I don't know if it was only, but it's certainly one of the few papers that covered both the South Side and the West Side. So now what you have are papers that do either or. And though the name and legacy will live on through the digital space, the printed pages will be sorely missed. But when I'm on the South Side, I duck into a 7-Eleven, uh, Harold's Chicken, a um, gas station. Um, I duck in and I look for my Defender and I grab one. It's like that favorite uncle or favorite aunt who's always been there and you just grow attached and they don't get sick, they just go away and that's, that's what's happening. And it's important to know here, this is not the end of the Defender itself as an organization. Mm -hmm. uh, just the company uh, says no one is losing jobs because of this. They're just ending the print publication, the mm -hmm. paper itself, um, printing its last copy today. But this still hits hard to see that print version because that's it's so integral to the yeah. civil rights yeah. movement and, and the progress of black people in this country. We know that media is changing, but uh, as it said in the package right there, I mean, just the role that this newspaper has played within the black community specifically when no one else would cover the news that was going on on the south sides and the west sides of the city. Mm -hmm. um, I would also add that, you know, it's still necessary today. Mm -hmm. There's still 100%. stories and things going on on these sides of the city that need to be covered, that need to be included in the media coverage. And it doesn't always make it to mainstream. Everyone deserves a voice in media. Everyone deserves that representation and that Defender, what a great name for that publication. Yeah. I think that one of the things that the Defender did, not only for the black community, but also was a publication that didn't portray African Americans as many of the mainstream outlets did in yeah. stereotypical ways. It told real stories of what was happening in neighborhoods. And that was important not only for the African American community in Chicago, for the white community, for everyone to understand that yeah. everyone has an equal voice at the table and everyone needs a publication sticking up for their for yeah. their rights and what yeah. they want well, to do. A lot of people are going to miss that. Good yeah, job, definitely. Brandon. Wish okay. them the best as they go digital. Hope, yeah. you know, hope it works out. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well